A 25-year-old man, a scavenger, was repeatedly visiting outpatient clinics of a large district hospital for many months without getting permanent relief from recurrent attacks of dysentery, frequent diarrhea and loss of weight. In last two years, he had two episodes of typhoid fever. None of the doctors could accurately diagnose his condition and labelled it as hurried colon. Only if one doctor on duty had asked the patient one simple question, what exactly is the nature of your work? The doctor could have understood that he was a scavenger who was working with garbage, sewage and infected material from hospitals. Effective history taking has long been identified as a core discipline in treating patients. Spending more time compiling a good patient history has been known to provide the most benefit as compared to long physical examinations and expensive laboratory tests. Collecting an incomplete history can affect initial therapy and all subsequent decisions for treatment. Therefore, it is essential that primary care physicians ensure that neither the patient nor the health system is unduly burdened by deficient history taking. Primary care providers and family physicians can play an important role in improving the recognition of occupational disease, preventing progressive illness and disability in their own patients and contributing to the protection of other workers similarly exposed. This role can be maximized if physicians raise their level of suspicion for workplace disease, develop skills in taking occupational histories and also learn basics of advising prevention. Industry Profile In common terms, a scavenger or a waste picker is a person who searches for and collects discarded items or a person employed to clean the streets. In addition to the above, there exists another form of scavenging called manual scavenging which consists of the removal of human excreta by hand in public streets, septic tanks or closed gutters and sewage. All over the world, scavenging is a means to income to millions, predominantly in developing countries. This work is generally done by the poor and marginalized sections of society and majority of them are women and children. In addition, in India, this occupation is caste-driven with the majority population belonging to the backward or Dalit caste. Due to informal nature of the job, it is difficult to estimate the actual strength of workforce. As per some studies, in Ahmedabad city, there are an estimated 30,000 waste pickers. Gujarat has over 100,000 waste pickers. Another study estimates that the number of waste pickers in Delhi alone would be approximately 100,000. The total population of waste pickers in Pune is estimated to be 6,000. Manual scavenging, meanwhile, is being carried out by over 1.2 million people. Distribution of Workforce The people working here can be grouped as per the activities they do as part of scavenging or waste picking. 1. Organized workers employed by local municipalities or private bodies to sweep and collect garbage from private and public bins. 2. Organized and unorganized workers who clean septic tanks, sewers or clean night soil from dry toilets. 3. Unorganized or autonomous waste pickers who rummage through garbage in public bins, roadside gutters and landfills for useful waste to be sold. 4. In India, the majority of this work is done without any protective gear and under the most inhumane and polluted environments. Characteristics of work 1. In majority of the cases, there is no formal relationship between the waste, 
pickers and their employer. 2. They are autonomous waste pickers who work for themselves or forced by society by virtue of their caste into the occupation. For example, manual scavenging. 3. Majority of them are poor and marginalized. 4. Men mostly do the more robust activities like cleaning the sewers and collecting garbage, while women and children mostly do the cleaning of toilets and waste picking activities. 5. They are stigmatized by society and do not have access to basic sanitation facilities, healthcare facilities or educational institutions for children. 6. They are exposed to toxic gases like methane or hydrogen sulphide from decomposing landfills or from sewers or gutters. 7. They are exposed to industrial waste in form of sharp metals, bottles, needles, paper which may have become saturated with toxic material, bottles with chemical residue, pesticides, solvents, etc. 8. They are exposed to biomedical as well as biological waste from discarded needles, hospital waste, human excreta, animal carcass. 9. Scavenging involves carrying heavy, dry or wet waste loads or biological waste on night soil in crane baskets to be dumped in common landfills or to outskirts of villages. Health Problems and Disease Patterns Waste pickers or scavengers face physical health risk not only in their line of work but also mental health risk due to discrimination from majority of the society who treat them as untouchables or lesser individuals. In addition, these individuals are exposed to health risk at their home as well as they live in unhygienic conditions and do not have access to basic facilities of water or sanitation. Health Condition and Causative Source Respiratory Conditions Asthma and Bronchitis Cause these arise mainly due to the constant exposure to contaminants and improper burning of garbage, making the scavengers exposed to fumes and toxic chemicals. Tuberculosis Causative Factors From constant exposure to dust and fumes and poor immunity due to malnourishment. Pneumonia Causative Source due to inhalation of polluted air at dumps and exposure to dust. Gastroenterological conditions Acid peptic disease Helicobacter pylori infection which causes ulcer in stomach and intestine and also may cause stomach cancer. Causative factors Contaminated food, water and utensils. Campylobacter infection Causative factors Due to consumption of water or food contaminated by human waste Cryptosporidiosis Giardiasis Yersinosis And other parasitic infections Causative source Due to consumption of water or food contaminated by human waste Viral gastroenteritis, hepatitis A, foot and mouth disease, enterovirus and rotavirus infection. Causative source Due to consumption of water or food contaminated by human waste. Hepatitis C, causative source From exposure to infected hospital waste like needles. Dysentery and enteric fever Causative source Shigella and Salmonella infection from exposure to infected hospital waste like needles. Irritation of eyes Causative factors From exposure to poisonous gases in sewers. 
burns and smoke inhalation causative factors due to spontaneous or deliberate burning of garbage in dumps neurological and behavioral conditions chronic headaches dizziness sleepiness causative factors due to lack of oxygen in the air around landfills dizziness and nausea causative factors due to gases emanating from decomposing waste more pronounced during the summer months anxiety and depression causative factors mental trauma due to the daily struggle for livelihood accompanied with the discrimination done by society injury and physical harm cuts and lacerations causative factors from sharp objects metals broken bottles and from lack of protective gear sexual violence causative factors due to harassment by police contractors other sexual predators summary scavenging seems to be the most neglected and ostracized occupation and there are few serious studies conducted on the health issues afflicting those in the scavenging profession their daily exposure to dirt and unhygienic conditions puts them at risk of almost every communicable disease and their exposure to improperly disposed industrial and commercial waste products puts them at risk of serious life threatening illnesses Primary care providers will do a world of good if they are able to impart knowledge of hygienic practices to people in this occupation. Ideal recommendations for health, safety and welfare of scavengers. Government of India has taken numerous steps and initiated several schemes to specifically abolish the practice of manual scavenging of human excreta. Some recommendations are 1 demolition of all dry latrines 2 psychosocial and livelihood rehabilitation in modern marketable skills of all manual scavengers and their families and formulation of 100% centrally sponsored schemes by ministry of social justice and empowerment to support the rehabilitation initiative 3 special program for education including higher education and computer education of all children of manual scavengers and 4 to amend the law to ensure sharper definition of manual scavenging and accountability of public officials who employ or fail to prevent manual scavenging for other scavengers the least protection which can be provided is provision of protective gear like rubber gloves clothing and mechanization of garbage management preventive interventions require strategic contribution and efforts from government through occupational health and safety policy and legislation cooperation from employers as well as workers and advice from medical professionals occupational diseases manifest after long latency period from the time of exposure there are challenges to establish and declare that a disease is due to hazard at workplace elaborate guidelines for management and prevention of occupationally caused diseases is beyond the scope of this documentary as currently there is no mechanism for doctors to enforce their recommendation without a statutory backing we therefore give general principles of prevention preventive measures should be designed and implemented at three levels of prevention one primary prevention aims to reduce the occurrence of disease by eliminating the cause of disease for example use of benzene free solvents or solvent free paints to eliminate the risk of carcinogenicity or reducing exposure to safe levels that prevent it from causing damage for example reducing noise at its source to levels that do not cause noise induced deafness 
2. Secondary prevention to identify and treat health problems as early as possible. Often, before symptoms have developed, in order to take corrective action. For example, regular audiograms among workers exposed to high levels of noise in the work environment. 3. Tertiary prevention aims to avoid complications of and disability from illnesses and injuries and or to provide rehabilitative and palliative care. It aims to minimize the consequences in persons who already have disease and depends on appropriate treatment. We expect that the primary care physicians are already well versed with clinical knowledge for management of the occupationally caused health conditions. To learn more about detailed clinical perspective, treatment and prevention and control, please refer to ebook or printed version of BOHS for informal industry, manual for primary care providers. So, if your next patient with any of the presenting symptoms we described earlier comes for treatment, please don't forget to ask him the million dollar question. What exactly is the nature of your work?